Atlanta and West Point 290 is a 462 Pacific, built by the Lima Locomotive Works in March 1926. Compared to other locomotives of this wheel arrangement, the 290 is one of the more powerful types built, with a boiler pressure of 200 psi and 73 inch drive wheels, producing 47,500 pounds of tractive effort, roughly 10,000 more than the predecessors they would replace. The design principle behind this engine was power at high speed, being able to hold its own at over 60 miles per hour with up to 15 heavyweight Pullmans coupled behind. The final product, classified as a P74 by the ANWP, was the ideal candidate to handle probably the most important train over its route. On this hot and humid Sunday at Atlanta's Terminal Station, the 290 stands ready. Now arriving on Track 5 is one of the Southland's most glamorous named trains, the Crescent. Since leaving from Washington, D.C. the evening before, the train has been traveling over the Southern Railway behind one of their ornate PS4 Pacifics. If at first these engines look similar to each other, it's not as much of a coincidence. Both the 290 and the PS4 can trace their routes back to the heavy Pacific design for the United States Railroad Administration. What distinguishes the 290 from the PS4 is driver diameter size, wheelbase, and running gear, cosmetic changes aside. Performance-wise, these engines are almost on par with each other. Just outside of LaGrange, the 290 and the westbound Crescent meet their eastbound counterparts. On the head end of this train is the 190 of the Western Railway of Alabama. This time, the family resemblances are much clearer because these are, in fact, siblings. 190 and 290 were both built in the same order, and technically for the same company despite wearing different road names. Although the Atlanta and West Point and the Western Railway of Alabama appear as separate companies, they're both owned by the Georgia Railroad and Banking Company, operating as separate entities for tax reasons. Regardless of what the tender tanks say, it wouldn't be uncommon to see either of these engines together in this town. the train to Montgomery, where the consist will be handed over to the Louisville and Nashville for the final leg to New Orleans. The ritual would repeat right up until the end of the steam era in 1954, being displaced by dieselization. Upon their retirements, the 190 would fall victim to the torch, while 290 would instead be donated to the city of Atlanta and rolled on the static display in the city's Lakewood Park. A group of enthusiasts calling themselves the 290 Club would become the unofficial caretakers of the engine, 
eventually helping to move the engine into a more permanent home at what would eventually become the Southeastern Railway Museum in nearby Duluth, Georgia. While in storage, it was often debated as to whether the engine could run again, given the success of the steam excursion program staged by the Southern Railway and later Norfolk Southern. While there would be a few attempts that didn't get far, one opportunity would present itself in the mid-80s. The New Georgia Railroad was an all-new excursion program that was supported by the state, operating very similarly to the NS program both on their rails and on neighboring CSX. Initially, the steam trips were led by Savannah and Atlanta 750, a much smaller Pacific that was found to be underpowered on virtually every mainline trip it operated. The New Georgia decided that something much stronger was needed to handle the normal tonnage on its own, and so an inquiry was made to the museum. In late 1989, the 290 emerged from the New Georgia's Pullman Works site, under steam, and with lots of noticeable adjustments. With help from veteran Southern Steam Program volunteers, the 290 gained some cosmetic trademarks such as a red and brass number plate, white trim, a brass eagle, candlesticks, and a smoke lifter. Most notably, its original, much deteriorated tender was replaced with an all-new tank, complete with an increase in coal capacity from 20 tons to 24 tons. This, however, reduced water capacity, which meant that the engine would need this auxiliary water tender wherever it went. First hitting the main line between Atlanta and Macon that September, it wouldn't take all that long for 290 to settle into the mainline excursion business. In three years, the 290 covered quite a lot of bases and ended up in all-new territory thanks to being on good terms with Norfolk Southern. Towards the end of 1992, however, the 290 was in need of work to its running gear, with its drivers needing to be turned. The work began promptly, but slowed to a stop when the new Georgia's primary sponsor, the Georgia Building Commission, cut back on its funding for the excursions. It was hoped that the 290 would be ready in time for the 1994 NRHS convention in Birmingham, but the overall attitude to mainline steam excursions was shifting. That year, not only did the NS steam program come to a close, but the New Georgia Railroad as a whole would be liquidated after losing support from the state government. With those hard blows came the end of 290's second career. Today, although the 290 is in fair condition, and would make a good candidate for a third operating career, the simple fact of the matter is, is that there's no place where the engine can run. The 290 was built for high-speed heavy hauling, and places where the engine could do as it was designed are just few and far in between. Although it's highly unlikely the 290 will run again, the engine is well cared for in the back shops of the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia.